let's talk about proposition logic have you ever wonder why proposition logic is a topic of computer science especially why we have to prepare a proposition logic in gate kind of exams think about it so you know if otherwise it is not so important then why we keep that in uh, gate exam right gate is one prestigious exam very standard exam probably they think twice or thrice before you know adding something in the syllabus isn't it still proposition logic is part of the syllabus the reason it is very important isn't it think about it can you see any application of proposition logic in computer science before that i will tell you what is proposition logic in two lines proposition logic or any logic is first of all reasoning thinking about something understanding about something and inferring something from some information these are all things part of logic when it comes to proposition logic proposition logic is a formal logic where you deal with the statements okay so it's now restricted to statements so proposition deals with statements it understands statements it reasons about statements and it try to infer something from the statements example consider two statements one is raju attends a class let's say raju always attends a class okay now if raju attends a class then rani attends a class is a second statement with that as a human being what can you infer think about it so by observing these two as a human being what comes to my mind is rani also always attends a class isn't it so yes you ask your brain why that conclusion is made and is it only for raju rani what about rani vani what about other two guys so this kind of statements whenever you have always they infer that rani attends a class isn't it so let's see applications of you know proposition logic in computer science example if you write a program that program supposed to give output isn't it then my question is how can you guarantee that this program whatever you have written gives a suitable otherwise you know expected output that's a question probably how you solve this problem let's say this program p and its expectation is output x but how can you guarantee it then you will be doing this one right like you take inputs i1 i2 i3 so on and you show that uh, you calculate the output by executing it let's say i1 output x1 i2 x2 so on and some i n output x n right so probably take some test cases and run your program for the test cases and see the output if that output is correct then you can most probably say that your program is correct but unfortunately that's most probably correct program but not exactly correct program because your program only works for test cases otherwise you know you have a confidence that that program works for all the cases but there is no mathematical proof then what can happen though you are enough confident but still your program may not be so confident right otherwise your program may not be a proper program and that program has a small error so that you know some 0.01% of the time that might fail still it's a failure isn't it so finally i want to say that a program is successful only if it works for every case if your program fails in at least one input then still we say it's a improper program or you know a program with failures correct then my question is do we have any mechanism to prove that some program works always so this is called verification of the program okay it's a very big science and very essential science for computer science people verification of the program okay so verification of the program can be done by this uh, basic idea about proposition logic example i have a program p and its output is x and i say that x is a property and this program should have a property x isn't it now let me convert this program to some set of mathematical statements s1 s2 s3 so on like you know this kind of statements and i also convert this property as another statement some s and somehow if i can prove that this set of statements infer this statement s or you know output s by using mathematics or using the logic i prove that this set of statements always infer 
this property s if i can do that then i can say that this program is proved mathematically using otherwise propositional logic that's application of propositional logic okay so there are a lot of other logics possible they are you know first order logic you know temporal logic modal logic so many logics let's look into the details about propositional logic okay let's begin with proposition proposition is a mathematical statement or any statement a general statement for which we can assign either true or false but not both at a time example 2 into 2 equal to 4 this is a proposition since we can assign truth value true 3 into 3 equal to 10 here i can assign a truth value false isn't it now sometimes i cannot assign anything example x equal to 5 since x is a variable i can't decide whether x is 5 or not isn't it then if i don't know x value i can't decide x equal to 5 or not that's why this is unknown truth value of this value is unknown this is not a proposition let's write one more statement this statement is true so this kind of statements refers themselves isn't it so now this statement is referring itself and it is claiming that it is true let's write true then as it suggests right then according to my idea i assigned s value true then this statement is true and the meaning of the statement also same so it is matching right so that's why it's perfectly a proposition because i was able to assign truth value now we'll take one more example this statement is false So now this statement is again it's referring itself isn't it now this statement is true or false is a question let me try first true after that false let me try s value true first this statement is true but the statement is claiming it is false read it so the statement claims that it is false but you have substituted s as true then you are agreeing that statement is true if you really agree that this statement is true then you have to agree on the meaning of the statement okay so i accept the meaning of it if i accept the meaning then statement supposed to be false then you note it finally you are noting down that statement is true and statement is false at a time that is not possible isn't it so let's cancel it try with s value false if i take s value false then i should not agree upon the meaning of the statement isn't it that's why i said s is false if s is really false then whatever the statement claims i deny it let me deny the statement's uh, truth value this statement is false i deny if i deny it then statement supposed to be true let me write it so finally statement become true so i took s value false but i'm ending up with s value true again the statement is taking true values isn't it so finally what i want to say is you assign s value true but you ended up with two values and you assign false again you ended up with two values then finally your statement is taking two values at a time not single value isn't it that's why this statement is not proposition so this is called liar paradox liar's paradox So finally in proposition logic we talk about only propositions okay so we don't consider paradoxes and all the theory about proposition logic only you know suitable otherwise it works for only propositions let's continue with the proposition logic first we begin with proposition variable proposition variable is a container which can contain a proposition example you can keep a proposition 2 into 2 equal to 4 now this containers truth value will become true let me denote propositional variable by p q r so on from now onwards i use these variables to denote a propositional variable so in one line propositional variable is a container which can hold a proposition now if you ask me what is the truth value of proposition p without telling me uh, what is inside it then i can't say truth value correct then at that time i just go for possibilities like i say that one possibility is true 
one possibility is false since we know that every propositional variable definitely contains some proposition inside it then it's that based on that its value either true or false so from now onwards whenever you have a propositional variable think about possibilities like two possibilities one is true one is false now come to connectives connectives are operators in every mathematical system you can see objects and operators okay example number system number system contains numbers as objects and operators uh, addition subtraction multiplication isn't it similarly propositional logic is a mathematical system where you can see objects and operators objects are nothing but propositional variables and operators are nothing but connectives so there are five famous connectives like addition multiplication are famous in uh, number systems right in propositional logic system these connectives are very famous negation conjunction disjunction implication by implication you might have studied about them in your engineering and in your intermediate so that's why these are all things familiar for you but let me quickly uh, give some summary of these connectives and you know uh, how they will be used okay uh, negation is used for connecting one com proposition okay example if p is a proposition then i can connect p using negation p whenever i do that i end up with a compound proposition from now onwards compound proposition is in a proposition which contains some connectives inside it so whenever p is a proposition compound proposition is also a proposition its truth value depends on p how it depends is a rule okay every mathematical system starts with some basic rules we cannot question about them similarly here we cannot question why negation p is false when p equal to true that's the beginning of this science okay so that's why it is a blind rule we cannot prove it okay so when p equal to true negation p false when p equal to false negation p equal to true you should remember it similarly let's see the truth value of p and q when p is a proposition q is a proposition then i can connect p comma q using conjunction so conjunction disjunction implication and by implication generally used to connect two propositions whereas negation is used to connect one proposition whenever p and q are propositions then p and q is a compound proposition its truth value depends on p comma q how it depends is a rule and that rule is when p true q true then p and q true in all other cases it is false such a way it is defined we should learn it p or q is almost every time it is true only in this case it is false you remember it so finally p and q is true in only one case p or q is false in only one case that's the relation between p and q and p or q when p comma q are two propositions we can connect them using implication and by implication also we'll see the rule of implication whenever i connect p comma q using uh, implication that will form a compound proposition and that compound proposition's truth value is true or false or true or true depends on the behavior of p comma q if you carefully observe p implies q can be false in only one case where p equal to true q equal to false you, this, that is very important point you should remember it okay so p true q false then only p implies q false in all other cases it is true now come to p double implies q so p double implies q's behavior is again depending on p comma q isn't it how it depends is a rule when p and q both are true then it is true when p comma q both are false still it is true but in other cases it is false these are all rules to be remembered okay so now i taught you the rules about uh, connectives whenever you connect two or more propositions or one or more propositions then the compound propositions behaviors we have studied okay you remember them and everyone should remember p implies q truth table and p double implies q truth table by the way uh, i have forgotten to tell you what is truth table truth table is nothing but information of this compound propositions that's it a table which stores information about compound proposition p implies q p double implies q p r q they are all called truth tables of respective operators okay so this is a truth table of p r q this is a truth table of p and q in that way it's a information table about connectives let's go into the details of proposition logic okay so we'll see some of the truth values of some of the statements which are compound statements example of one compound statement is 
if Raju attends the class, then Rani attends the class. This is not a simple proposition, isn't it? I can further split it into two parts. There is one simple proposition called Raju attends the class and there is another uh, simple proposition called Rani attends the class, isn't it? Now these two are combined using some structure that is if P then Q. So this is exactly equivalent to P implies Q in proposition logic. Okay. So say, saying P implies Q in logic and writing this English statement are equivalent. Whenever we write this English statement, then it should have some truth value, isn't it? Because it's a compound proposition. And we know that its truth value depends on P comma Q. That's why. Let's take one example where, you know, we can calculate P value and Q value. Based on that, I would like to calculate P implies Q value. See this situation where, let's say, Rani is attending the class and Raju is on the hospital bed. We don't know the reason for that, but you know, he's taking some saline or something. That means, you know, he got serious fever, isn't it? Now in this situation, definitely he cannot go to the class, right? So I assume that, let's say Raju is not in the class and Rani is in the class very well. Then what is the truth value of P implies Q? So whenever this kind of statement is given and you want to know the truth value of it, simply substitute P's truth value and Q's truth value. Then P's truth value here because P is nothing but Raju attends the class is false implies and Rani attends a class is Q which is very well true then false implies true. False implies true is nothing but true. Since this uh, truth value is true then I can say that if Raju attends a class then Rani attends a class statement is now true for this situation. You understand that? Now we will see the case where uh, this can be false. If I take like this, let us say instead of Rani, if I draw Raju here and let us say Raju is in the class and Rani is on the hospital bed. Let me modify this picture to Rani. If I change the situation to uh, this situation, then probably the truth value of P plus K will be false. Let us check it out. Raju attends a class now is true and Rani attends a class is false because she is on the hospital bed, then true implies false is false. In that way, in that way, based on the inputs of P comma Q, then we will find out truth value of P implies Q. That's it. It's very simple. Now take one more example. Raju attends the class if and only if Rani attends the class. This English statement is exactly equivalent to proposition logic construction called P double implies Q. From now onwards, whenever you see Raju attends a class, if and only if Rani attends a class, simply write, since we know that Raju attends a class is P and Rani attends a class Q, then simply write P double implies Q. Writing P double implies Q is equivalent to writing P if and only if Q. Now I want to know the truth value of this Raju attends a class, so on. Okay. So case is this one, case number one. In that, Rani is in the class but not Raju. Okay. In this situation, we know that uh, the truth value of P double implies Q will be since Rani is in the class, Q will be true and Raju is absent in the class, then P value false. False double implies true is false, isn't it? So that's why already I told you, <coughs> please refer the truth table. That means you remember the truth table, then only we can answer these questions. Everyone should know the truth value of P double implies Q when P value false and Q value true. Then only we can answer. Okay. Now we will see the case number 2. In case number 2 what happened? This is classroom. It is empty. And Rani got fever and Raju got fever. Then the truth values of P comma Q are false comma false. Then false double implies false is nothing but true. According to the formula or truth table. Isn't it? So that's why. Raju attends a class if and only if Rani attends a class is true if both Raju and Rani are absent. If one is present then it is false. Based on the information what we have about P comma Q we can find out the truth value of P double implies Q and P implies Q. Okay. Let's summarize. Whenever you have P implies Q that is nothing but in English if P then Q. Whenever you have P double implies Q that means you have P if and only if Thank you.